now. Let's start with some administrative, yeah, some, let's say, reminder. So reminder number one, the assignment one is due tomorrow, end of the day. So 23, 59, 59, 59 uh, of night. And you have to submit your presentation in PDF on the GitHub repository you have. We will give feedback to all the groups about the assignment one and the results on Wednesday during the lab hours. So as a reminder, the feedback will be all groups mm, without dividing in slot. So from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. We will have a schedule for each group so that you don't came everybody at 1 p.m. and then wait infinitely but we will try to tell you when to come so that you can stay these 15 30 minutes needed to get the feedback and proceed and the feedback will be from a variation of everything is fine just start work to assignment two or it will be there are things that need to be fixed removed change and so you have time before starting assignment two to actually do these changes and again feedback is just about giving input to you to uh, improve the course improve your project the steps in your project so that a significant mistake now will not compromise the rest of the project of the course so it's not about evaluation you are not getting a grade now you will at the exam Feedback is just feedback for you to improve, okay? And the feedback will be, luckily, so this is to be confirmed, but in theory, it will be not in the usual lab hours in the uh, rooms, because we have three different rooms and moving between them will uh, waste a lot of time, but it will be in Sala Colloqui. Sala Colloqui is a room uh, at the fourth floor above the university register office the general register office in corso castelfidardo and you have to take the elevators you can reach that room only by the elevators and go to the fourth floor and there will be this room small room all of three alberto Tommaso, and me will be in that room and we will receive one group at a time according to the schedule we will publish tomorrow okay uh, and in creating the schedule, we are considering what you said in the form for creating the groups. So you, if you cannot attend the second slot, you will likely be only in the first hour and a half uh, of this feedback session. And vice versa, if you can only attend the third one, you will be at that moment of time. But we will proceed in parallel, the three of us, so that we can use all these 4.5 hours to give feedback and speak with all groups for at least 15 minutes each. And the schedule tomorrow and the confirmation of the room also tomorrow. I sent a booking request, but they haven't replied yet. Assignment two, that will be task, storyboard, paper prototype, etc., cetera, um, will be out this week. Uh, but the first lab to work on it will be on the 8th of November. Because next week, next Wednesday, is holiday, so we don't have a lab. So the, the text will be out, you will, will have time to, to read it, to start working on it if you want, but the first lab in which you will work with, with the teachers will be the 8th of November. Hmm? So the lab will be about task. we started last time to speak about it. It will be about scenarios, storyboards, and we will cover this today, and it will be about paper prototypes, and we will cover it next Monday hmm? so that you have time to also cover that part before the starting of the lab. And these are the three news. Any question about this? Okay, good. So let's go back to task, etc. So last week, 
Last week we spoke about task and we have seen many features of a task, characteristic of task, advantages, disadvantages, what works well, what is not working well for task, etc. And we stopped here. We stopped saying there are many techniques for task analysis and that are listed here. And one of these is task decomposition. That is, getting a task, last time we exemplified, among the other things, with the uh, clean up the house as a task. A task decomposition allows us to split task into subtasks with specific ordering and specific plan. So we are now, go now going to see uh, hierarchical task analysis as this technique to decompose and analyze tasks. And again, task analysis, task analysis is useful for, once you have a process, to get deeper in that process once, once you have to design something to understand which are the steps, the precise step, the specific step you, you want to design for. And this is one method that's pretty simple as a method that's called the hierarchical task analysis. Um, it's called the hierarchical because it's built a hierarchy of task and subtask. So it's a procedure, as I say here, to disintegrating task into subtask that could be analyzed with a logical sequence of their execution. And again, this help achieve the goal of the main task, the higher level task, in the best possible way. So this is an example of a very simple hierarchical task analysis on the same high level task we have covered last week, how to clean a house. Last week, we covered that in a, uh, dialectical way, just speaking, or which are the possible steps, etc. Now let's try to analyze it a little bit deeper. So first of all, how it's composed, a uh, hierarchical task analysis. A hierarchical task analysis is composed for at least two parts, and it could be represented in different ways. This is one representation. So first of all, is hierarchical. So there is something that is on a higher level hierarchy than the other. So here, zero is the father of one, two, three, four, and five, and then three has three sub-steps. So there is a hierarchy. Under zero, there is three. Under three, there is three dot one, three dot two, and three dot three, etc. In addition to the task and their subtask, there are also plans. So plans, describe how those tasks are executed and under which condition they are executed. Hmm? So let's have a look at this. So this task is in order to clean the house, subtask. It has five subtasks. One is get the vacuum cleaner out. The second one is fix the appropriate att attachment. The third one is clean the rooms and then empty the dust bag and put the vacuum cleaner and attachment away. The same steps we have seen last, last uh, week with the same mistakes and missing points we have covered last week, like plug in the vacuum cleaner. Um, and also we said last time that clean the rooms is quite general and we can actually specify better what it is. And in this example, it's specified better. So clean the rooms mean first, clean the hall, then clean the living room, and then clean the bedrooms. And these are the steps, hmm? the hierarchy of tasks, how these things happen. And then there are plans, and plans, in this case we have two plans, plan zero and plan three. I imagine there will be also plan one and plan two somewhere. And plan zero say, say do one, two, three, and five in that order. And condition. When the dust bag get full, and only in that moment, do four. Hmm? So if the dust bag doesn't get full, just s avoid the step four. So step four is optional. Hmm? So it's listed in the list, in the hierarchy of task, but the plan say, don't do it until that moment. Uh, and sorry, this is plan zero because it's referred to task number zero. No, not because there is number zero, one, two, three, but because it's the plan that referred to task number zero that is the higher level task. 
And then there is plan three that refer to task three and all its subtasks that say that you can do any of 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 in any order. So again, adding is not specifying the specific task better, but it's just adding condition. So some steps are optional, some step as a random order, in some step you have to wait for another step to be completed, or some steps happen only in some condition, like when the dust bag is full. So this is an example of a hierarchical task uh, analysis. You see there is a hierarchy, there is a plan attached to some uh, item of this hierarchy. Uh, and plans here as written just in a generic way, like do any of 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3 in any order, depending on which room you are in, uh, but it could be further refined with additional context, additional knowledge, like 3D1 should be done every day, 3D2 once a week, and the bedrooms only when visitors are present. So you can add additional constraint, additional condition that are not in the logical operation, let's say, of the task, in the sequentially logical operation of the task. So how the hierarchy works? You start, as we said last time, with a task, clean the house, then you define the steps, and then for each task you understand if the task is at a level of precision that is enough for the task or you need to decompose it in subtask and you ask the question um, every time. So given a task, this must be composed in a subtask, and given a subtask, must it be decomposed, et cetera, et cetera. And so the formal answer, the formal question to, to answer is, what subtask must be accomplished in order to perform the mind task? So to clean the house, which are the steps, and for doing step one, which are the steps, et cetera. And you stop it, Hmm? when, uh, well, the answer, first of all, comes for direct observation, expert opinion, documentation, your own experience. So which are the steps to clean up an house? Well, you have to get the vacuum cleaner, and then that could be observation, could be experience, etc. Uh, and then for each subtask, you ask the same question. So do I need to better specify the get the cleaner, get the vacuum cleaner out or not? And as we said last time, there was a question from one of you saying, well, maybe I need to specify where the vacuum cleaner is. So reach that room, open the door, etc. And my answer last week was, well, let's assume context that we know where the things are. And so we don't need to give this extra instruction. But maybe in other contexts, you want to give this extra instruction. You want to give this extra extraction to the people that need to use the task analysis, or to you for remembering that these are specific aspects that are needed. Hmm? So you can probably always find a subtask, but you have to stop when the knowledge and the context is enough to stop the decomposing the task in another uh, subsequent task. Hmm? And for sure, for each task, you can observe What's happening? You can ask about procedure and triggers. So what, what needs to happen before this? What needs to happen after this, sequentially or not? And also what happens if a task goes wrong? Hmm? So another plan, another alternative, another path. And then you have also to sort in clearly step in a, an appropriate order. Hmm? You don't clean a room before getting the vacuum cleaner out. There is a logical order for things to happen. And here is saying again what, what I basically just said. So when the process stopped, depend again on the intended usage of the HTA, the hierarchical test analysis depends on the context, the knowledge where the, this is going to be used. So the only the relevant task should be expanded and simple task could also be obvious to user, but still they should not contain risk of failure. If the, there is a risk of failure on a specific subtask, you should probably expand it or work against the failure of 
design a path to, um, to move after the failure. And motor action are at the lowest level, like pick this up, move there, etc. And these are often not needed. Not always, but often not needed. So let's see an example. So this is an example of how to make a cup of tea. So different example. Uh, than cleaning the house. And it's probably uh, not how many of us will do a cup of tea at home. Hmm? So let's uh, have a look at this hierarchical task analysis. Uh, so high task with high priority or high generability. Make a cup of tea. And then you see here there is a plan for the main goal. And the plan is do one. At the same time, if the pot is full, two, then three, four, and after four or five minutes, do six. So there are conditions, multiple, at the same time, and there are if, so branches, and there are time constraints after four or five minutes. So this is the high level hierarchy. This is a different way to represent the same thing we represented before with another example. So instead of having a list with some indentation, you have a graph. Mm, so there is a hierarchy, and under make a cup of tea, there are six steps. And after step one, there are other four steps. And under some of these subtasks, there is a line, and the line say that you don't want to decompose that task anymore. Mm, so that's why under two, three, four, five, six, and all these one dot x, there is this line that say don't decompose further. And when is a subtask, there is a plan for the subtask. So now, look at this. Is it okay, or there is something missing? In, at some level. It's not too specific, but yes, that is one thing that's missing. So there is turn off the gas here, but there is no turn on the gas. So if we follow this specifically, we say, okay, to make a cup of tea, we need to boil water. And to boil water, we need to fill the kettle, put the kettle on the hob, and wait for the kettle to boil, but the kettle will never boil if you don't turn on the gas. So here, either after 1.1 or before 1.3, you need something turn on the gas or whatever it is to allow the kettle to boil hmm? so this is a one step that is missing because there is turn off gas so and even if you imagine that the gas is still on when you reach 1.4 you turn off so what happens if i need to follow this again it's missing one specific task that is turning on the gas uh, anything else that is strange to you Yeah, they say, so boil the water in a kettle, and then when the water is, is done, uh, you have to put it in a pot. So if the pot is full, only if the pot is full, execute two. So the pot, the teapot, um, if it's full, empty it. We're missing the pot. We are missing get the pot, but also get the kettle, but yeah. We are missing the... Uh, the instrument, the tool to do uh, all the things. Uh, also pour tea, where I pour tea, probably in some cup, okay? But yeah, the, um, the ingredients mm, are missing as the pot, the, the kettle, the pot, etc. Uh, something else that maybe is sort of strange. That is strange, right? Because 
actually, yes, wait four or five minutes is a sort of a task because I'm waiting, but it's also here in the plan. So that is a choice. It's not, it's not wrong as it's done now, but it's a choice. So in this case, it's, a, it's both an explicit task and also a plan. Hmm? Let's say, okay, remember the task. The task is fundamental. It's not something that is optional to wait four or five minutes, but you have two. And I'm um, enforcing this by putting it in the plan and as a task. But yeah, according to, to other, in other contexts, in other tasks, so this is clearly a relatively simple task, you can have it in the plan and not in the task or vice versa. Okay. So tasks are also a way, as we said la last time, start to say an explanation of goal. Hmm? So imagine asking a person the question, what are you doing now? And for the same action, the same person can reply one of those things. And all of these are correct. Hmm? Imagine I'm writing something. So in this moment, I'm typing Control-B. And Control-B is to make a word bold. And I make a word bold because I want to emphasize it. And I'm emphasizing a word because I'm editing a document. And it's not a generic document, it's actually a letter I'm writing, and I'm writing the letter for preparing for a legal case. So the goal could be as specific as the very tiny action I'm doing, like typing Control B, or as general as I'm preparing a legal case. And we already covered this last time when we speak about goals, but tasks are also a way to explain and to describe goals. Hmm? And clearly, if you need to describe this higher level goal, you will have multiple tasks or very high level tasks. If you need to explain typing control B, you have a very specific task, probably a subtask. Hmm? And it's also one of the possible way typing control B to make a word bold. That is again one of the possible way to emphasize a word. Hmm? So also keep in mind this. And then, I'm sorry, but I brought already to fix the microphone, but apparently they didn't. Um, so the hierarchical catastrophe analysis we have seen, it can be further refined for considering other things, including the mistakes that you have spotted, like once we have the hierarchical task analysis, every action is matched with an opposite or contrary or the appropriate action, like we are turning off, there is a turning on or not. And yes, it's missing a turning on. So why is missing? Should we add it? Probably yes. Um, it could be also be restructuring. So this is above the example, but it's, it's about a more general way of refining any hierarchical task analysis, you can check the match action, you can also restructure it, like make port uh, might be a meaningful task and also group related action. So uh, let's say uh, two and three and four can be subtask for a group, let's say make port or something like that. Hmm? Uh, and then balancing complexity. So poverty is simpler than another task like make pot or not. And if it's not simpler, it's not the same level of abstraction, then maybe it should be a subtask or a higher level task. And we can also ask ourselves, is this generalizable, generalizable enough? Like what if we want to make one or more cups of tea? Because this task analysis just stop at let's say one pot of tea. What if I want to do more than it's available in the pot? I need to change it, I need to refine the hierarchical task analysis. And for instance, this is the modified refined task analysis, including hmm, the changes we have said. So turn on the gas, for instance, appeared here. And then make pot is the group task the bigger, the higher level task for warm pot, 
put, li put tea leaves in pot and pour in boiling water. water. Hmm? So it's, it's a group task. And also there is a repetition. Hmm? So 5.1 is followed by 5.2. There are still empty cups, yes, I will continue, or no, and then I will stop it. Hmm? And I can also do the same for getting more tea in the pot. So repeating the entire task. Mm -hmm. And it's also added um, there are some other like do sugar and put milk in cup that maybe could be optional or not according to some plan. So plan five, you can also say 5.1 only if people want. And like this here, like do sugar and do sugar is first ask guests if they want sugar and then add them if needed. So it specifies also how to interact, how to get information to proceed with the task. So this is, again, the same hierarchical task analysis before, just finished, refined, with more level, with more details, and interaction, and cycles, etc. And still all the plans. But again, the same basic ingredients are still there. There are tasks, there are subtasks, there are plans. And tasks are in a hierarchy, one each the other. And you can, and you can, okay, and you can um, use the task analysis again to describe a process that you observe, but also to plan for something. So imagine that you have actually to do this, to implement a user interface, to follow some goal, to reach some goal, to reach some task, you can describe that in this way so that you can check if every step is representing, is doable, and what happens if it goes wrong. And these are the main construct, construct to define plans. So you have fixed se sequence, have you seen? You can have optional task, we have seen. You can have wait for, that we have seen, it's also part of the it uh, could also be, in some cases, a specific task. This is especially important. You can have cycle. You can have time sharing. So while we are doing one, then do also at the same time two. It could be discretionary, like do three, one, three, two, three, three, in any order. It doesn't matter the order. Well, not for the cup of tea, but for cleaning up the house. And in a plan, you can have a mix also, clearly, of these. So some mix sequence, some optional tasks, some wait for, etc. Not all of them, but some of them. And this closed task analysis, it was the thing we started to speak about last time. So last time we said that this lecture, this couple of lectures was about analysis, a syn synthesizing information extracted from need finding, and task analysis is one of the way to analyze, to think about task, and then continue to work on this task to create some plans, some strategies, some procedure. And this could be helpful for you in this stage. Again, if you need clarity about some activities you have seen, but also in the future, if you want to uh, use task to proceed. And we are going to ask you to create task for your project. Mm -hmm. So in the first things in assignment two will be define three tasks a simple, a medium, and a high difficult, a difficult task for your application to solve. So you can use your task analysis to better understand if the level in which you describe task are, is good enough or not. And we're doing an exercise on that tomorrow in the class. But task analysis is, is not the only thing you can do for analyzing and synthesizing information, because also task analysis is a way to make synthesis of information. You observe something, you have information about something, you want to plan tasks and act actions and steps to do that, to fulfill some goal. Uh, the other things could be uh, scenario and storyboard, but before speaking about scenario and storyboard, let me introduce you sketch. Uh, because scenario storyboards are made of sketch. So let's have just one slide on sketches. So what is a sketch? A sketch is a drawing showing something. And this something
And this something could be various things depending on the kind of usage you want to do for sketches. It could be a single user interface screen depicted in a hand drawing. It could be a drawing and an artifact or a part of, the syst of a system, or it could be the shape of an interaction object. And here you see three sketches. Hmm? So you see, for instance, two uh, user interface screens and how people use them. And the third one, you see instead an interaction object. So what give you an idea of the, so what the third sketch give you an idea of? What's, what's going on in the third sketch, the, the lower one? What's the message that should be conveyed there? That's the, buy the ticket is a, a goal. But what's, what's happening here? What's going on? Not what, what the person is doing, like buying a ticket, etc. What is happening in this picture? Communication between yes, communication between the device. But what is happening here? What is going to com because communication between the device can also be done wirelessly in five meter distance, but it's not the same here. What's going on here? Describe this. What's happening here? We don't know to do what, right? But yeah, there is a person using the phone to interact with another machine. And this interaction is not tapping something, but just going closer, putting the two objects closer to each other, right? And you see there is a person, and you see that there's a smartphone, and you see that there is something that is not a smartphone, and it's something as, as, as things on it. We don't know what. It's not written. We cannot read the text. And it's fine because it's a sketch. But this gives the idea of the interaction that should happen. A person going close to another object with a smartphone, with an app open on it, with something we don't know, to do an action, buying a ticket, pay something we, again, don't know. And this, from this sketch, we don't know. And but what the sketch wants to convey is the interaction moving towards this object with another object that can be held in the hand of a person. Hmm? And then if we put a lot of sketches together, we have a storyboard and the storyboard maybe we can understand if it's about buying ticket, if about paying for something else, etc. And look at these other two sketches, what they, what they are about. Yes, again, user interface to what's happening here. They are mouse-based user interface, is our touch screen user interface, touch screen. And this touch screen is likely a smartphone. No, it's difficult because it's, it seems bigger compared to the end, right? Uh, do you know exactly what it's about? It say movies, so it should be something around movies, but you know exactly what's going on there? Yes or no? Who say yes? Who say no? The others, maybe? You don't see what's happening here. Even if you look closer, you see that it's about movies. And there are play special articles. So maybe it's not even a cinema because you have also articles. So, but if you click on movies, you can do other things in this other screen. And this is totally fine. And it's totally legit for a sketch. A sketch gives a static view, a static view. You don't know what's happening after, before, you don't know, of a possible interaction and help set the context of interaction. You have something that should be operated by a touch screen with big buttons, probably, and you know this is a touch screen because you 
have a hand that touch something on screen and here the interaction is moving an object towards another object and sketches per se are just static representations so they became useful when they are part of a longer representation like a storyboard that is the next thing but before storyboard scenarios because actually storyboards are a way of doing scenarios so scenarios are stories as I say here for designs so stories of interaction and the stories could be made in a lot of formats it could be written in text it could be graphical like storyboard it could be flowchart our description of how a person engage with an interactive system to solve a specific task and here again task hmm? so we can have multiple level of details in scenarios we have stories that as an MC are scenarios but are made in a purpose of story written text-based stories that is used to understand what people do and what they want or need stories the person is opening the application because he wants to buy some food at home and then we have conceptual meaning abstract scenario and concrete scenario and finally we have use cases and use cases are the one used for specification implementation and they belong more to the software engineering domain and it's something that human interaction share with software with part of the software engineering field but we are not covering as you should have covered it probably in software engineering one scenario instead are um, conceptual and concrete are way to generate or envision ideas and their evaluation so something that's come before moving on and conceptual scenario as abstract task from stories from what's happening from need finding etc there is no reference to specific technology like in the sketches before you cannot say if it's android or ios for the smartphone is there is an app a web app something you don't know and it's not important in that specific moment and conceptual scenario may lead to different concrete scenario that are just one possible solution of a conceptual scenario and show how a specific technology is used in the context so in a way the difference between conceptual scenario and concrete scenario is similar to the difference between designing a software and implementing a software which is What's the difference between designing a software and implementing a software? So many of you are computer engineers, so that's expected to be known knowledge. Okay, you well the design is like the design of the application is like oh you see the design of the user interface yeah. no <laughs> not no not not only Yes, when you design a software application, you design how the software application is structured, including the user interface, if it has a user interface, but also the backend, so which are the endpoints, if it's a web application, which, which are the endpoints, which are the root, it's a, con it's a distributed application or not, and which are the classes, and so in a theoretical way, in a sense. The implementation is how you implement that designed application. So, once we know that it's a distributed application with five endpoints, the implementation could say, okay, I, could, I, would, I would do it in JavaScript with this framework, with this language, with these properties, and with this specific feature. Or I will do it in a totally different language, in a totally different system. And I will do it 
on my computer, I will do it on the cloud. So specific technological choices that are not included in the, in the design. And here the difference is more or less the same. So in conceptual scenario, you have scenarios that could be implemented, realized in a very specific, in different way. And the concrete scenario is how you get one specific solution from that conceptual scenario. And one of the most common, and what we are going to ask you also to do, to represent scenarios, either conceptually or concrete, are storyboard. Storyboards are all about task. So that's why also are in the same lecture about task. And the emphasis is how some system, something support people in the development of the task they have at hand. So the definition of storyboard is a graphical depiction of the outward appearance of the intended system without any system functionality. Hmm? And it's done end drawn, sort of comic, with few panels. You see here nine of them. And these panels, most of this panel, if, if not all of this panel, must start and end with people and must include people. So a storyboard that doesn't show people is a wrong storyboard. Hmm? And each panel is a sketch with the same properties that we have seen a sketch. And a storyboard communicate a story, as the name say, a flow of things that happen at a key point in time. So first this is happening, then this is happening, and then these other things happening. And since we're going to ask you about to do a storyboard, let me just say here that artistic skill are not required. It's not about nice pictures, nice drawing. It's about good enough to communicate ideas. Okay, and here, well, what to find in a storyboard? You want to illustrate a goal. You want to illustrate some specific task and how the task unfold with the people and at the end of the storyboard, like any story, you accomplish the goal. So your goal is to buy a ticket and at the end of the story, you should have successfully buy a ticket through a series of steps that are the rest of the storyboard that are represented by the task that the person is doing in the storyboard. So as I said before, storyboards are all about task. And here is an example of a storyboard, six, sketches no more than this and in all of these there is people so what's going on here what is this storyboard about which is the task which is the goal what's happening what's the story here so what's happening in the first sketch Finishing work, yes, and? No, in the first one, not yet, right? It was gone. It was gone. So the next step is going on. So we expect in the rest of the storyboard that there's to be something towards home. There is another important thing depicted here, which is? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's half past 12. No, it would be probably six, I think, because we had a busy day at midday is not really a busy day, right? Uh, it should be six. There is a time that could be designed better, drawing better, it's fine, but 6 p.m. Okay, so what's going on after? What's going on? Hmm? It's taking a train, and what's the problem here? And why is no signal is a problem? Yes, the phone has no signal. What, why this person needed the phone? To check what to cook. Hmm? So you have the context, busy day, 6 p.m., and going home, and the problem. I need to check what to cook, I didn't before, and I have no phone. And 
Is this person happy? No, good. Um, so what happened next? An application suggested a application suggested a recipe. Curried chicken, 2022 calories. <coughs> and then? Yes, it's in the end, but here? Grocery shopping. So we are not anymore in the subway on the train, but we are in a supermarket somewhere. And the application say, okay, I need chicken, apples, etc. So this person is buying stuff. Um, and then? Yeah, it seems application instruction, and it's here, I think the phone, and students like they can do that. So easy enough for me. And in the end, the goal is fulfilled. What was the goal here? To go home and, and have dinner. So the goal is fulfilled. The person is, is having dinner. And do you think that, look at this detail here. Do you think that it's just about having dinner or just or there are other properties? It's about calories, so I don't know if it's healthy or not, but surely it's about calories. Hmm? Otherwise, probably if it's about healthy, it will be said something else. So it's about calories, only 200 calories. So probably it's an application for showing recipe for dieting, for instance. Yeah, for example, could be an application, but you see this that is helping busy people to plan uh, for, for dinners, for lunches, etc. But you see, what's the storyboard about? The storyboard is telling a story of a person with a specific goal and the tasks that are needed. That is, boil ingredients, actually cook the dinner, and then do it. And here there is description, how the app has already downloaded the daily recipe, to their smartphones so that you could look it up and check the shopping list while on the underground without the internet connection before shopping for ingredient and uh, making a healthy or at least a low calorie uh, meal. Another one, still about eating, but what is this about? Let's not go sketch by sketch, but in general, what's happening here? Yes, to find a recipe with all the ingredients at home. And there are another characteristics of this. Before looking at what, what's the problem here? The shop are closed and? Sorry? Yeah, but that, that you, you discover at the end. So what's the problem in the first sketches? It doesn't want 35 minutes for pizza to deliver. So shops are closed. I did not shop. Let me look on the delivery application and say, oh, but the pizza takes 45 minutes. I don't want to wait 45 minutes. And then, so there is a context. It's 8 p.m. and something happened. There is a problem. The problem in the other, um, Application was I don't have internet connection in the train. I didn't shop. I need to shop, etc. And the application had solved this problem. And here, I didn't shop. The delivery is too long or too expensive. But in this case, it takes too long. And then I have something in the fridge. So let's see what I can do with something that I have in the fridge. And so here, there's an application that suggests 15 minutes. And it's the key point, right? Because if the application suggested 50 minutes, then you could have taken the pizza because it was quicker to get a delivery than actually cooking the quinoa salad with feta, right? And it's easy to make. It's only 350 calories again. And so half an hour after this person is eating. Hmm? 
so you tell a story and in this story there are all the ingredients that are needed even if they are not immediately understood all the ingredients that are needed to tell the story so the problem the solution and the fact that this application is looking for a recipe according to the things you have at home and one point critical point is time and another probably critical point is easy to make and another one is 350 calories so if you are going to imagine an application starting from this you will do something that will probably have you to insert the ingredients they will give you a level difficulties will give you time and will give you calories and so these are requirements in a way for the application you're going to do but you have a goal you have a task and you want to fulfill that goal so what storyboard should convey <coughs> storyboard should convey settings so who are the people involved we have seen two examples with just one person but maybe you have multiple people the environment at home around at the park in the train at work etc the task to be accomplished and then the sequence which are the steps what happens one after the other what's the starting point what's the problem what's the solution of the problem what's the trigger of the task the problem that the task is going to solve and which steps are involved and importantly let me say that again we have never seen the user interface of this application do you know how the the look of this user this, inter this, uh, this application no we know that it's a smartphone application because we can imagine that and we know there is something on screen but we don't exactly know which buttons are there how long is the text etc and it's again totally fine and needed for storyboard so not detailing the user interface but just showing the role of the user interface in helping people achieving the goal achieving the task and then it should also uh, convey satisfaction so the fact that the person is happily um, eating the dinner at the end so the end results that the task is fulfilled and under which circumstances is satisfying so calories time etc 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 so these are the things that a storyboard should um, convey so uh, there could be three types of storyboard the one is the traditional storyboard like the one we have seen so comic book convention there are actors that are speech bubbles there are backgrounds and you can also have notes attached to each scene to explain what's happening if needed like later in the day or at the grocery shopping like a comic a comic book uh, you can also have a score storyboard when the user interface is dynamic or spe uh, contains specific media and so you add since it's undrawing you have specific annotation of movements color sounds etc so dynamic elements and you can also have a text only storyboard in some cases when the interaction is so complex that you cannot really depict it, depict it but you have just to write and describe textually what's going on what's happening so similar to a story a user story as we uh, hinted before and all of this needs to be done and drawn so without any software that prevent you to end draw it could be end drawn paper can be end drawn digitally but end draw why because the goal here is to create a storyboard to convey a message to convey an information to synthesize some results some task so you want it to be quick so that you can experiment with multiple storyboards multiple scenario and if make an error just delete everything or start again and imprecise you want it to be imprecise in the look and feel uh, because if you need to show this it will catch less the attention of the details because the details are not yet decided hmm? so allow people to focus on the context of what's happening in the story instead of focusing on over this color or this detail or I would have moved the button here etc and there is no distractions by fonts color icon etc so end drawn storyboards uh, is what we we are going to do and what storyboard typically do 
and if you want there are many ways if you need suggestion the many ways to sketching people you can have the stick people the block people the star people that is basically a start for the body a star for the body and then a circle for the head the triangle and whatever format you want to represent the important thing is that you looking at that understand that this is a people a person and not a computer or a door right it should be something that explain what is the design of and the star ma ma the star people is actually very versatile because you can also have movements if you want just changing how the star that is the body is uh, drawn hmm? this again to say that it's end drawn imprecise and it's fine it shouldn't be highly professionally made as a coming book you are going to to sell so which are the benefits of the storyboard the benefits of the storyboard is that they emphasize how something an application an interface a product help people to accomplish a task and focus on the conversation on the context on the feedback on the task and if you have to explain it to another person or have to onboard another person on why your application is important on why your application solve a problem that is a needed problem you have a concrete visual example to do that and it's also avoid nitpicking about again user interface detail like buttons and colors and layouts etc okay so you can actually focus on the things clearly what are the disadvantages of storyboards what storyboards does not show you what's missing a storyboard if you want to have some information or not here yes interaction within the application is well it can be right i mean it could be two different sketches like well not a specific interaction but like these are two pages of the same application so if needed you can add but clearly you don't know if you tap here and you go here or there is something in the middle the detail of how the application works is not visible because again the goal is people and the application is just there to support the story to reach the goal they want other things that are missing clearly missing that is the opposite of what is written here clearly Yeah. Maybe eventual, uh, like, uh, what ifs? Um, if it went wrong? Uh, yes, what ifs. So if you want multiple paths about things that gone wrong, you will have probably multiple storyboards. It was a very, very long storyboard. But again, a storyboard tell one story, right? So the story, and the story should end well. So it cannot be a drama. It should be an actual uh, happy ending story. And so you have one representation of the story one version of the story another thing that is actually written here well as a benefit so you can revert it it doesn't show the user interface so you cannot uh, speak about this interface you do, cannot learn anything about this interface you cannot learn anything about the layout you cannot learn anything about colors and about fonts etc and this is again part of what a storyboard is and what we're going to do after storyboards are, is prototyping and there we will go deep on the user interface right so the process we follow so far with an anticipation to the next step is we got some needs we identified problem we identified domain we got some needs we get some solution for those needs and we are trying now to synthesize to analyze the results of that phases to showcase what's going on what's the context of use which are the people involved etc and how that specific application solve a specific problem and not a generic it would be a better word with, with this application, but a specific project problem in a specific context. 
And then the next step is, okay, now that we identify the task, the goal, et cetera, let's design it. Let's create this user interface, let's create this application so that we can concretize the application that is quickly drawn in the sketch, in the storyboard, that is sketched in the storyboard. Okay? Good. So, this close the class for today. Tomorrow we are going to do an exercise on task and storyboard. Um, before leaving, I will just display you that slide I mentioned to you before, but I'm going to stop the recording first.